So this is an Audio Pro, All Room 1, which, uh, if you're not familiar, is a sort of indoor C uh, mains powered uh, Wi-Fi line in speaker music center sort of thing, uh, which is has nice audio, it's a nice device in general. However, uh, I want to use this thing outdoors, and uh, generally with this sort of device, uh, since it has a switch mode power supply, a thing you can often do is just feed it a relatively high DC voltage on the mains plug and it will actually turn on and run off of batteries. However, what I figured out with this thing was it would not run uh, on anything under about 110, 115 volts DC, which is just annoyingly high. Uh, I want to run this off of uh, uh, a couple of e-bike batteries, which would give me uh, 60 to 70 volts available, and uh, that just wouldn't do. I would have to use three in series for that to work out in the original configuration. So I've uh, spent a decent amount of time mulling over the data sheet for the uh, power supply uh, chips, and this is a very basic, simple power supply, actually, or rather two. Uh, it's uh, based on two independent, completely independent, uh, power supply uh, designs. You can see it's got uh, two transformers there. Uh, the five volts for the logic is derived from the little top uh, something or other chip uh, down there. And that actually runs perfectly fine uh, down to about 30 volts or so. It just uh, powers on like a champ. However, uh, you will get, if you just feed this thing 30, 40, 50 volts, uh, you'll get the display lighting up, it'll think it's on, but you won't get any actual audio out of it. And that's because of a big uh, chip there, which is a top 249YL, I believe, uh, actually has an undervoltage lockout feature enabled. Uh, but the chip itself is actually specified to run down to 30 something volts, depending on the transformer configuration. And uh, this being a mains power transformer, you obviously don't want to run it uh, endlessly low because it's just not going to work. In my experience with some modifications, is that it will run down to about 60 volts, but I haven't in terms of a thermal performance of a transformer yet. It might want to go up in smoke on continuous operation. Uh, but the modification is very, very simple uh, to disable. Uh, the under voltage locket and also the over voltage locket in you in case you hook this to a way too high voltage power supply uh, is to uh, remove one of these three chain resistors and jumper let's see if we can get that in shot the pin that the resistors go to to uh, this pin which I think is source uh, and what this will do is it will disable uh, the under voltage locket as well as the over voltage locket. So uh, this one will thing will essentially keep trying to turn on regardless of what voltage you feed it. Uh, it will fail below about 60 volts, uh, but it seems to run just fine uh, on uh, 60 volts and up. So there's that. There we go. That's a decent angle of a modification. Uh, so, right now we're actually pairing this uh, off of a bench power supply, and if I turn off the volume on my source, we we can actually get music out of it running straight off of a DC power supply. Uh, also perfectly within the range of uh, the two 36 volt e-bike batteries in series, which is exactly want, what I want to use to power this thing with. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's uh, basically it. It seems to turn on uh, quite reliably, uh, down to just over 60 volts. If at some point it will start hiccuping and uh, not doing its thing, but if we I think it might be hiccuping right now, actually, at just barely over 60. Yeah, it'll do that right around 60 volts, but if we just uh, turn this up to ever yeah, so slightly more. I think we need to reset it because it's going to be annoyed with us. Oh no, actually, it's not going to work because I have the wrong current limit on the power supply. There we go. Now with uh, four amps available, it's actually going to turn on 
Yeah, at about 60. So now we should actually be powering this. There you go. Uh, we have the 30 volt uh, power supply for the power amplifiers coming straight out of a 61 volt uh, power supply there. So the pin out of this power supply is uh, fairly simple as far as the actual uh, power supply is concerned. You have a negative for the power amplifier, positive for the power amplifier. Uh, and then I believe this would be uh, the 5 volts for the logic stuff. Now there are two more pins which sort of do something which I haven't quite figured out. Yeah, I think one is just to power on because it goes straight into uh, this optocoupler over there. Uh, and uh, what the other one is, I really have no clue. But just feeding this thing 5 volt, putting 5 volts and 30 volts there, uh, it doesn't seem to really be too happy about that. It uh, tends to just lock up and hang and uh, not actually ever power on. So uh, there's some sort of startup sequence magic going on with this power supply that uh, you need to take into consideration if you want to just uh, bypass the whole thing and, uh, for instance, use your own uh, 5 volt uh, reg to power it if you would like to run it, say, straight off of uh, a uh, 30 volt battery. Uh, without uh, involving this uh, power brick at all. Uh, but I'm uh, just not in the mood to really uh, do that right now. So I'm just gonna clean up my modification there and uh, uh, make this thing uh, more universal voltage. It's such a simple modification. And uh, there you go, that's the modification cleaned up and uh, uh, all finished up. You can see I removed one of the 680k resistors and uh, I just sort of left it there uh, disconnected just in case I want to revert this modification. If it doesn't work right, I'll just have a resistor right there and available. But you can see under the R518 text there, uh, there's nothing actually connecting that string of resistors to anything. They're just floating in free air. Right there you can see how I've just uh, taken a piece of wire and blobbed a bunch of solder across there so that uh, that pin, it's uh, called the line sense pin, is connected straight to the source pin. And that just disables under voltage protection as well as over voltage protection uh, on the chip. Now, uh, if, you, if you live in a place where you often have uh, over voltages on the grid, it might not be advisable to do this modification, but if you just want to battery power this thing, uh, it's not going to make any difference. Again, I don't know if the power supply is going to uh, go up in smoke after a while. Uh, lower voltage means that you'll have higher currents flowing uh, across the primary side. So all the parts on the primary side of the power supply are going to be working harder uh, than they would uh, running off of mains. But uh, that's a risk I'm willing to take. I don't really care if this thing uh, blows up or not. And there we have it, all screwed back together. And as you can see, we just have a normal 230 volt power cord in our hand. Let's uh, plug that into our power supply. Let's see what happens. There we go. Just play absolutely uh, laid and fine. Again, I haven't tested the actual endurance of that, but it seems to work well. Uh, I've calculated the power draw. Uh, if uh, you can see, it's uh, about um, two, 250 ish milliamps at uh, 61 and a half volts. That's about 15 watts of power. So, this is not a high, high efficiency, long battery life device by any stretch of the imagination, but it does have the added advantage. If we can just take the same plug and plug it straight into the 230 volt outlet and hopefully it shouldn't go on fire. No indeed. So I'm absolutely happy with that result and uh, what more, you can see that uh, the uh, power consumption out of the power outlet is actually higher 
uh, than the power consumption uh, of a v, uh, DC power source. So we probably have slightly higher, uh, lower, uh, slightly lower. Uh, we, we probably have slightly higher efficiency on the power supply at to the lower voltage, uh, but that's irrelevant. What I'm concerned about is that uh, it's actually roughly the same efficiency, so we probably don't have to be too afraid of a power supply just going kapoof because uh, it would see excessive power dissipation due to the uh, lower input voltage. So I'm absolutely happy with that. That's a dual power source. Audio Pro, all room one. And I don't know what better evidence of a success you can get than that. And because I know you want to see it, uh, here's my two e-bike batteries with a little adapter put together, which goes straight into the Euro 8 plug. So, we have about 78 volts at the end of this, just in case you think there's something magical about my power supply that's making this work. Ah, there we go. Straight to batteries, and it's powering on just fine. Beautiful.